Hello everyone, my name's Lost, and today we are going to set up the entire map with towers and uh, the portal for both sides, and we're also going to implement proper respawning with an actual death animation. So, first things first, we are going to add the death animation, which, again, as always, you will find down below in the description. Uh, it just kind of, uh, how would you even describe that, um, like a miniature explosion, or fades away, I guess, but yeah, we're going to put the origin where we normally do. Uh, now you, you don't really have to do the collision mask for this, but I like to. I just like to keep everything consistent. I think that's quite important in game development, even if it's not completely necessary sometimes, if you know what I mean. Uh, I think it's just good practice. So, in the warrior now, let's uh, specify the animation. So, anim death, and then just link that to the sprite. And we're also going to create a new variable called dead. Because what we're going to do this time around is, when we die, we're not going to destroy the player character. I don't want to do that anymore. What I w the way I want to handle death instead is, when we die, we set the dead variable to true. And then what we'll do is, we'll set our alpha, image alpha, to zero so we're invisible. And we will teleport uh, to the top left of the screen where we're just out of the way. Um, and I'm doing that for, well, basically... Just because I want to keep us alive, so to speak, I want I want to keep not sorry. Let me rephrase that. I don't want to keep us alive. I want to keep um, the player character in the room. I don't I don't want it to be destroyed then come back. I want to deal with it this way. So what we need to do now is we need to say if if dead is false, and we're gonna put the rest of the code inside these brackets. Uh, and we're doing that so that if, if dead sets to true, we can no longer control the character. Okay, that's that's the idea behind that. Now we need to edit the death sequence, because as I said last video, it was um, more of a test, like I was just getting things ready. This time we're going to implement death and respawning properly. Now I will completely admit that I forget to do the um, death counter, like a timer on screen. Uh, and I don't do it next episode either because I focus on UI. But the following episode, I promise you, we will get a proper counter in there on the screen. So we're going to say if sprite index does not equal anim death, then this happens. Yeah, just like that. So if HP is zero, oh, we change a little bit of this actually. So remove instance destroy because we're not doing that anymore. And instead, we're going to set the sprite index to anim death. Set the image index to zero, and the image speed to zero point four. Again, you know what I always say about the image speed here. We don't actually have to do this because it's zero point four across the board. But I'm doing this thing for customization on your guys' part or, or behalf. Sorry, like if if you want to change the speed of any animation, then this is the way you then do that. And yeah, so what we do now is we set up a new variable, like a new temporary variable, and we call it my var. So var my ID is self ID. That just gets the character's ID, and the reason I'm doing that uh, is because if you if you just below it where we're setting my own equals object warrior, we're going to change that to my ID, and then you have a foolproof way of um, always getting the character that has actually died, right? So, if we then go the instance position route, where we try and pick up the instance position on the X and Y as we die, let's just imagine for a moment a minion accidentally steps over our point. It could either grab um, the player or a minion, so we can't do it that way. We have to get the very specific ID of the instance that has died, and the way we do that is like that. So, now we've set the ID properly. Now we go to animation end, and we have to say else if sprite index uh, is the anim death. Then stuff happens. What happens? <laughs> I don't remember. Okay, so we set dead to true. Uh, we set image alpha to one. That should be zero. I changed that to zero in a moment. I just, for some reason, I get confused. I don't know why. But as you can see there, we've set the X and Y to zero. Uh, so we'll be in the top left of the monitor, or screen, sorry, just um, invisible. Uh, right, yeah, now var my respawn. 
actually what I do here is I take this bit here, just cut that and put it in the animation end. It just it just works better here. Um, so instead of setting all that up, um, you know, but before the animation's finished, because if you remember in the last episode, we didn't have an animation, um, and so we we could just sort of make that happen instantly. This time we need to create object respawner after the uh, animation has finished. Otherwise, we're just going to disappear before the animation's even begun, which wouldn't make any sense, obviously. So now let's head into object respawner. And I do believe there's a couple of edits in here. Yeah. So we no longer we no longer need to recreate the player because you know we're not we're not deleting him or destroying him in the first place. So with my owner, apparently, <laughs> no, with my owner, uh, let's set him to the normal position. So sprite index. Let's give him his idle animation back. Uh, let's set him at uh, image. Yep, image index zero. So he's back to. Um, the very first animation, if you like, sub image, whatever. Uh, X and Y, this is just the coordinates where he starts originally, we're just going to put him back there. And yeah, image alpha now equals one. Well, I think, yeah, there we go. Now I realize I've messed up and I change it here. I think. Do I? I thought I did. Yes, I do. <laughs> well done, lost. Good job. Um, yeah, so now into object tower. And we're going to say if instance exists, um, my target. And the reason we're doing that is we're just preventing crashes here. It was just an inconsistency on my part that I realized we should probably do this. Uh, just so that if the instance exists, we'll fire. If it doesn't, we won't. We'll avoid crashes this way. It is a good thing. Just trust me. So if oh yeah, and also we're going to check for if my target dot dead is false, because you you can just imagine cat yeah how little sense this would make. So we die as the player, we teleport to the top left of the screen. Uh, so I keep saying screen, you know, you guys know what I mean. I'm I'm just I'm just cracking out here for some reason. Um, and so we're in the top left of the monitor screen, room, <laughs> whatever, invisible, and then this projectile is just floating to the top left of the screen. That would be, you know somewhat ridiculous right so we're just preventing that from happening here because if we're dead uh, it will do it so anyway we still need to be in the tower do we oh no we don't I test it here I'll skip ahead oh spoiler alert by the way uh, this does not work <laughs> in fact it goes terribly as you will see in a second so first things first we can see that the the depths are all messed up we'll We'll fix that shortly. At least I think we th we fixed that shortly. I th I'm pretty sure I did do that in this episode. But yeah, let's see. So sweet, the animation goes off nicely, uh, and then look what happens once we respawn. Tragic things, ladies and gentlemen. Tragic things. So look, as you can see, we keep restarting our animation. Uh, I cannot move. I don't think. I don't think I can move the character. No. And the reason for that, first off, dead. I forgot to. Um, set dead to false again. So what's happened is dead is still true, which means, um, and we oh, also we don't reset the health to 100 either. So dead is still true, which means what what we're doing is I, I believe this is what's happening. We're recreating object respawner. It, that's it's something like that anyway. Let, let's have a look. Uh, so in object respawner, yeah, first things first, we set dead back to true. Oh, I'm sorry, dead back to false. You know what I'm saying. I'm just, again, crack loading up for some reason. And also HP back to 100. And I then decide to do HP first because that makes more sense. And for some for some reason, I'm now just randomly looking through everything. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. So I, I was right. I set the depth back to minus one. So remember, the lower it is, the higher, it, the, the closer it is towards you at the monitor. Okay the Z axis, if you like. Anyway, spoiler ladies and gents, this time it works, I will skip ahead and drink tea. Even though it's now freezing cold. And yeah, oh, no, it's still broke. Oh yeah, that's it, because 
we're continually creating object respawn. Uh, I believe that's what's happening. Now I get confused for a moment because I'm like, you know, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> so I'm kind of spazzing out a little bit because I, I have no idea what I've done wrong. Uh, so I'll skip ahead until we get to the point we need, I guess. There we go, lost. Well done, you figured it out. Uh, I seem to get a little bit excited with the mouse there. <laughs> so we have to set the sprite index off anim death. Uh, because we're saying animation end, and if it's anim death, then we just create object respawn and do all this crazy stuff in here. So, so we're never stopping animation death. So we're just constantly creating new object respawners, which was ridiculous. I might, but I can't believe I didn't spot that before. Uh, so we're going to change. We're going to when we go invisible, we're just going to reset it to anim idle, so we don't get this crazy stuff happening. And, and that's essentially the fix. Uh, so let's remove animation idle from here. Oh, you know what? I should have kept image index there, so that when we respawn, we're at the first animation, which would make sense. But you know, that's hindsight, right? I would leave that in if I were you guys. It just makes more sense. Uh, but yeah. So I test it again to make sure it's working. Boom, and we're here. So, spoiler, ladies and gents, it works perfectly this time. I promise. <laughs> And also, I will say that the projectiles kind of grown on me a little bit. I kind of, I kind of like the look of it now. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Maybe you can give me your opinion on that. Also, I will redesign the portal at some point because it looks absolutely gash. Right? It is shit. And yeah, bingo, it works. I'll redesign the portal at some point. But yeah, there we go. It's all um, fixed now and stuff, and it's working nicely. So now I decide to do some organization because you know, even though I am on crack sometimes, I'm at least, you know, a neat crack addict or whatever i don't know but yeah i just put the player stuff in the player obviously uh and the minions the player minions will go in here as well uh but yeah uh this was just totally arbitrary to be fair <laughs> i just because the project's getting a bit bigger now i'm kind of thinking you know i don't want to lose track of what's going on so i want to put everything in and, and it's good practice to do this anyway right you know you can't complain too much it's a good idea I would recommend, you, you when, when you start getting like, I don't know, maybe like 10 objects or something, and it would be helpful to organise them, I would always recommend you do it. Uh, you'll thank me later. <laughs> right then, so it's uh, it's player tower time. And this is really easy, this is easier than you might think it is. So we're just going to duplicate object tower, and we're going to bang that in the player folder. Uh, I just rename it here, I think I call it uh, player at the end, yeah. In hindsight, I think I would have named the enemy towers Object Tower Enemy and our towers Object Tower Player, but you know what? I'm not too fussed at this point. I think this works okay, uh, as long as we can distinguish between them. But yeah, change the parent enemy to parent player. That's step one. Uh, variables, does anything need changing? No, I don't think so. Um, object main, this does. Uh, so we need to set the target to power enemy instead of power player. Because otherwise, it's going to be a very un unfair game, right? Because we're going to be um, going up against two sets of towers, and one of them we can't kill because it's on the player's team, right? So let's not do that. So just rename those to Part Enemy. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Uh, I think that's it, actually. Oh, I think I change it to Color Green instead of Color Red. Simply because, well, it makes sense. Uh... And we also need to duplicate the projectile, do we? Am I lying? Am I just on crack again? I might be. It's been known to happen. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I take I take object tower dead out of the enemy slot because it, it's going to be used for the play tower as well. Uh, but yeah, just dupe the projectile. Pop it in the player folder. Uh, and yeah, I, I think I just creatively re rename that player on the end as well because... You know, I'm just that creative. Uh, what am I doing? Like, we've, we've done this now. Come on, Lost. Get your act together. Just, just... Yep, it's all good. I promise you, Lost. Everything works in there. Yeah. Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay, well, failure, right? That's me. So, yeah, add player on the end of there. Um, in the projectile, obviously... Actually, I don't think there's anything at all we need to change here, no. 
No, we we program this well that it's just going to work with with everything. Oh, good job. You pat yourself on the back for that. Oh no, you can't. I'm lying. That was actually a lie. Change object tower player. Yeah. Sorry, I'm spazzing out a minute. I can't get my words out for whatever reason. Uh, so yeah, just change that to tower player, and then jobs are good in. Right then, now it's time to add the player towers to the map. And things start to look a little bit more alive once we've done this. Uh, so go into object control in the create event. We're going to do it this way. Now I've just been a little bit fancy with maths to make sure that um, all the towers are equally spaced from one another. I can't remember the maths. I, I recorded this a couple of days ago, admittedly. Uh, but I'm sure you can figure it out. I think I think what I did was I took the room width, which is 5120. And so I just did room width minus 3,200 for the first one. And that's one of our towers. And then I did 5120 minus 4480. And that, that gave us the um, the exact coordinates required for this. So yeah, well done, Lost. Good job. But yeah, let's give it a quick look. Um, spoiler, they're all there and they're working and they're all in the right place and it looks cool. Good stuff. Yeah, there we go. Uh, oh, we're all. We also add the enemy portal in this episode, so we're sort of just preparing a little bit for minions and uh, all the game rules, really, and getting it all sorted. But yeah, looks cool. Right then, let's add some health to our portal first. So create event, uh, and you know we've had since we, considering we've had this object from the start, it's it's kind of interesting that we're only doing this now. So yeah, HP equals one hundred. That's cool. Now we know the drill with this. We're going to draw the health bar. Why? What am I doing? There we go. Uh, yeah, well done, Lost. Good job. What am I doing? Come on. There we go. So draw self, because otherwise it will be invisible. And now draw a health bar. And I, th I don't know if I play with this for a little bit. I may do. So I'm just going to skip ahead until we get the the right coordinates. Right then, yeah, so I think this is what we settle with. I think. Uh, so you might have to pause this and just have a look. Oh, no, I'm lying to you. Apparently we don't settle with this. Uh, okay, we might settle with this though. Let's see, what do I think? Does pre, does, does past lost agree? Does he agree? No, apparently not. This has got to be it though, right? Come on, third time's a charm, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's perfect. Leave it lost, please. That's good. So you're just gonna have to pause this for a minute. Um, oh, bugger! I don't really show you the full code here, do I? Um, well, good job, lost. Did not do very well there, did I? Okay, I will just edit this in then, real quick. All right. Well, we're doing this edit live, ladies and gents. There's your code right here. Uh, feel free to just pause the video now and copy and paste that in. Right, so just to fit with the theme here of going with player for everything, I rename this to uh, Object Portal Player, because why not, right? Consistency and all that stuff. Now just parent it to Power Player, and there we go. So here I'm thinking we need to delete this from the room now, because um, we're gonna we need to add it with code. We're doing it with everything else, right? So. We might as well be doing this with code as well. Uh, so yeah, instance create, and then these are the coordinates that I decide on. Um, yeah, what, what am I doing? Ob object tower, what am I even doing there? Lost, no, lost, what are you doing? Oh yeah, so everything's broken. <laughs> Absolutely everything just broke. Um, so th what happened was all the depths are messed up for some reason. Doing that somehow messed all of the depths up. I have absolutely no clue why or for what reason, but we do fix it in a minute. All This is just now a... Um, uh, so the fix is to just go through all the objects and give them an actual depth value in the create event that is uh, lower than the background. So lower than the control. Now, I spaz around here, and I'm like, oh, is it because I put tower there? Which, you know, why would that have caused that, right? Come on, Lost. You know better than that. Uh, 
Also, I find it quite amusing how I just kind of sit here and rip on myself sometimes. <laughs> you know, like, Future Lost just kind of sits here on his high horse and, like, rips into uh, Past Lost. I do find that quite amusing. Um, so, yeah, I'm now looking through things. I'm like, what on earth is going on? Like, how did I just break everything? So, I'm going to skip ahead until I realise what I've done. Or, not what I've done, but what's wrong. So, see you in a second. Okay, so I just watched for, like, five minutes while past me tried to figure out what was going on uh somewhat screaming at myself <laughs> uh but yeah so the solution as i mentioned a minute ago is to just put depth here also what i'm what i would do if i was you i'd just go into object control first and set the depth to five uh, and then come back to object portal play and set the depth to zero is it zero yeah set it to zero and i think we do that for basically everything actually oh no set it to one i Hope you can see that. I set it to one. Uh, yeah, the projectile's fine. The player, we should probably do that as well. Set it to one. That's cool. Uh, oh no, sorry, that was the tower, wasn't it? My bad. But yeah, do it to the tower dead as well. Just one. And yeah, that that pretty much solves the error, guys. Yeah, everything's done. Oh, apart from this. But if you just set it to 1 again, and then it should be alright. So, let's test that out. And yeah, there we go. Everything's everything's back, as you can see. And now we're going to add the enemy portal. Okay, no, we're not. Something We're doing something else first, are we? Oh, yeah. So, uh, because our portal's like hanging outside the room to the left a little bit, I decided to move it a little bit to the right. Uh... Just to see. Yeah, and that, that's where I settle with. Right then, yeah. So let's now add the enemy portal, shall we? So let's copy and paste ours, or duplicate it, or whatever. We'll just drag it into the enemies. And that I didn't drag it into the enemy there. I think you can see that. <laughs> wow, do I not realise? Ah, lost. What are you like? Alright, so just rename object portal. Um... Power enemy, obviously, you just get that changed. There we go. Uh, and I don't actually think we change anything other than we change it. Instead of sea green, we change it to sea red. Uh, just like that. And, yeah. I think we. Oh, now we have to spawn it with object control. Uh, so, we just copy paste that bit here and. Obviously, rename it to object portal. And then all I do to get the math here on where to spawn is I just say room width minus 150. So, yeah. We'll check it out. And I think that's about it for this one, guys. Next episode, we will deal with the UI and stuff like that. And then, yeah, so next episode, we deal with the UI and we sort of just prep getting the minions involved and like um, skills and stuff so this series after the next episode in fact the, the next episode is quite a good one right it, it's pretty good uh, and then after that it'll pick up again because we will start adding minions and actually get some proper you know meaty gameplay going on so thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you next time hey guys lost here give the video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe if you're new and want more content like this and please give me your thoughts down below in the comments catch you guys later